The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron and I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, where the runway ends, the deals begin. Uncle Al is at his new location in Waterford on M59. Yes, that's Highland Road, Ronnie, well, just east up. of the Pontiac Airport. Fred Wetzel and the folks at TCOM Pagers, wide state beeper coverage wherever you're watching this program in southeastern Michigan. Dugan's Irish Pub. Take a bite of nostalgia, I believe, is Larry Payne's slogan on uh, Woodward, north of 13 Mile in Royal Oak. It must be why they're taking a bite out of you when you go in. Is that nostalgia? <laughs> the Sports Fans Journal. And believe it or not, I don't know how Cameron does it, gang, but issue number issue 14, number 14 is out. Really he hasn't well. gone under yet. I see my buddy Eli's uh, right on the cover. You're drinking buddy Denny McLean right on the cover Denny as well. Denny McLean telling exclusive stories. Denny, what happened in jail? And Eli, what happened in New York? That was... Uh, 200 pounds ago for Denny. Denny that picture of him. Yeah, he was at the ballpark, I understand, yes, too. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see, PASS, the Pro-Am Sports Systems, and we have P&P &P Cycle, Mike Perry and uh, in the gang, with three locations to serve you, whether you happen to be a Harley-Davidson owner like Ron Cameron. Not hardly. A bike parked right outside Not the studios hardly. today. Or even if you just like fine leather goods. Again, like you, again, like you, like, like you. Ron, you yeah, got that leather I jacket. Do. I you wear several like leather jackets. Looks like I a like piece them. of you know what. At my age, I can still wear leather and look Barely. good. Barely. Anyway, you need to it see Mike good. Perry no. and the folks out of P and P Cycle on the program. P and P today. is that for Penn Hollow and, and what else? No, but Penn Hollow does the commercial. Penn Hollow. Uh, I don't want to say what that other P stands for. On the program today, we have the man who, along with two or three other individuals, is responsible for so few people turning out at Tiger Stadium on these nights to see our ball club, as George would say, despite the fact that there's a, there's a divisional race going on. Larry Osterman, the uh, longtime uh, Michigan, Detroit area sports commentator, now for the last several years doing all the Tiger broadcasts on pass. And I see uh, in, in your publication now, you've got, uh, I think, George Icorn and, and somebody else, I can't remember who it was, writing about what's wrong with Tiger's attendance, why the fans are staying away. Well, I'll, Tom tell you, Gage, I'll, I'll tell you who wrote a nice Tom, piece about it. Tom Gage in Thursday's Detroit News devotes his entire column to why the fans are staying away. And they're, and they're I can add some more. 15, 20 reasons. Well, I'll add some more, but first I'll tell you, the guy that wrote a good column in the next issue will be on the newsstands this next week is Neil Heffernan. Yeah, Neil Sports, Heffernan. That's Sportsland right. yeah. USA okay. across the street from Tiger Stadium. He does a great job. Right. Why the Forget the plugs. He hasn't okay. paid to be on the show. Yeah. I'm trying to make a point right here. Okay. All the right. fact of the matter is these guys can deduce 15 to 20 reasons, but the only reason the Tiger Stadium attendance is so poor is because all these games are available on pass. Well, that's not the only reason. It is. Well, the Red Wings televise home I games. Mean, they're, 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 telling me that. They're, to they're talking about the fact that, well, you go down there and the ushers and the ticket sellers are so rude. Well, hell, they've been rude for years. Yeah, but they've I been rude for years. I'm going to tell you something. I think I think your heroes in baseball change, and I think that's a, a big reason. You know, back what? in the 30s and Bob Page's heyday, you had heroes like a Charlie Geringer and Hank Greenberg that were great people, as well as being great ball players. Today, you go to the fact a Lou Whitaker. I don't even know he's around. Uh, Kirk Gibson and Jack Morris refused to sign autographs. They've got terrible attitudes. Now, wait That's a, a big problem. Now, wait a minute. The most miserable human being to ever play the game of Major League Baseball was none other than Tyrus Raymond Cobb. The biggest name in but the he history signed of sports. Autographs. He may have signed autographs, but Ty Cobb was a miserable person. On the field, Everybody we're talking off the field. People here. came to see him anyway. Sure, that, well, he's you, the greatest that ever lived. They're, we're not sell, about they're that. selling this watered-down crap excuse for beer at Tiger Stadium. Oh, that's a, that's a big reason. And when you can go watch the games for free on a widescreen TV and drink real beer, or stay in the or stay in the privacy of your own home and sure. watch the games on sure. pass, you're not going to go. And, all right, now, and we'll talk too. with Larry Osterman about what they're going to do next the year. Whether they'll televise as many games because you're not seeing 
really yes. good baseball. No, that's you're not seeing good baseball. Okay, look, I'm not going to deny that, but that is not a reason well, why I people aren't coming down. I think people they're are not coming stuff. down because of the crummy beer and the fact that they can see the games for free. Well, and I pass. think there's a lot more than what the media has got. I think 125,000 subscribers now for this stretch drive. Now a lot of them are going to drop off when the baseball season's over, but that's 125,000 potential course, ticket buyers and different. their families. Plus these bars that are pirating the uh, You could the say that on the Cubs and the, and the Yankees televise all their no, own no. games. Those are much larger markets. Well, still, much I don't larger care. Markets. If this is a baseball town, I'll tell you this. If I were the Tigers, put the camera over here, please. If I were the Tiger fan, I'd them. be totally embarrassed by this city of being a baseball town just because of this. Well, I don't 16, think, I don't 17 thousand coming do, up. Do that's, Tiger an fans that's an embarrassment. That's an embarrassment. Tiger to this fans town. owe Mr. Monahan anything? No, but I'm saying it's an embarrassment. If Monahan and, and Jim down. Campbell get off the stick, bring real beer back to the ballpark down there, maybe treat the people a little bit you're nicer, right, and get so many of these drunk. games, you're right get there. so many of these people, uh, these games off pass, you'll see the fans going back to the ballpark. Simple as I, that. You'll, you'll see some. Now, yeah, I, I agree. The beer, the, the bleacher crowd's not the same. Not that they were absolutely to write home about the first place. And you know, Campbell's so interrupting all the time. Campbell's so. I have to interrupt you. Campbell's so uptight. He worries about the fans getting drunk and rowdy in the bleachers with their obscene chants. I mean, that no. That is bad. All right, fine, it That's may be bad. It's a reflection of Detroit. Is there any, it's a reflection of society in general. In Detroit. Is there any 10-year-old, 10-year-old kid out there today who doesn't know these words? Are they really going to learn any new words? No, because they, they're, the they're fans? right with them drinking they're with them. Not the 10-year-old. <laughs> yes, they I mean, are. <laughs> they're not going to learn any new words listening to the fans chanting the bleachers. But so still, just, it, it, the Tigers got to get off the stick here, and the well, fans will come back to the ballpark. Yeah, I, I still think there's more problems than what you're talking what about. What has happened to this American League East race here? Well, what's happened is Milwaukee's got a solid team. I tell you, they could win it next oh, year. Oh, come on, to sweep Toronto? No, they shouldn't. Not in Toronto, but you would sweep, too, and you had Charlie Moore behind the plate. Bob. Charlie they, Moore is as old as you. They had Ernie he Whitman moves Monday like night, you. didn't they? Well, but the, the fact still remains, you, you're talking about a second-rate catcher, a second-rate shortstop, even though he's not bad defensively, in Manny Lee. You're losing to some injuries, and Dave Steve, who was so called at one time was a race, is really, he's like Jack Morris, second half of the season, he's disappeared. Well, I, I still think Detroit and Toronto are the two best teams in Major League Baseball. I'm not going to argue. But backing in this way, to the, one of them winning the American League East It's a back in? No. You think we're going to be playing Monday afternoon? I think so. It should be interesting. If Walt Very Terrell, uh, interesting. Walt Terrell has uh, recovered from his neck problems, which necessitated Dan Petrie starting on Wednesday night. I think that may have been Dan Petrie's final start as a Detroit Tiger. Well, I, th I thought Hernandez's performance a few nights ago was his last appearance, and he came in the next night and, or two nights later and, and walked the only guy he faced. He may be done as a Tiger, too. Petrie be traded in the offseason if they can get somebody to take his salary? Well, I think that he's got some value. I think Dan Petrie's got some value out there. What's wrong? I think, and I've said it on the show, he needs to see a hypnotist or something. He's got to believe he can. I, I think it's an inner thing with him. I think it's a mental block with him that he can't win. He doesn't challenge hitters enough. His stuff is good enough. It seems like he's, the scout, a couple scouts tell me that when he's out in the bullpen, he throws the ball as hard as ever. And then when he gets in, he seems to nibble around and pussy foot around, if you know what that means in, in uh, other terms, if you're 10 years old, too. Or whatever how old you are. Are but you I, trying to make a statement here? I'm trying to make a statement. You're babbling and frothing at the mouth. Hitters. You can't say certain things on I a family said, oh, show. All right, fine. He's not challenging the hitters, and I think that he's got to realize that he can win. He's got the stuff to win, even though his slider's not as good as it used to be. All right, time, he's got to believe in time for your fearless picks. You embarrass yourself further on this program every week. And of I course, embarrass myself. Of course, the big one, ladies and what gentlemen, you? we have the Pontiac Pussycats, what they're calling the B team, entertaining Tampa Bay at the Silver Dome on Sunday. My prediction for this game is that the contest will at least be as entertaining as when the, the normal word. Lions play the Tampa you Bay Buccaneers. You haven't got the last word, then. Go ahead. Tobin Rhodes has been signed to Oh, is that right? Well, he yeah. may help out. Yeah. He may help out. Well, uh, all kidding aside about this, the strike is a very serious issue. I'd like to see them settle this thing, but the owners They'll are They'll settle adamant. within a week or two. The it's owners, a weak union. They'll settle within a week or two. But it's, I think some of the players will still remain out. It could be six to eight weeks before we'll let them, they settle They'll let them not get paid. The owners, be about, to come the owners remain adamant about breaking this union. Well, I and hope they do. And they're going to do it. I hope they do. Well, I don't hope they do. Why, I hope why they would you do. say that? Because, I, number one, I think it's a, a weak union. I'm not going to argue that, but why would you it's hope they break it? Well, I just hope that they get the... I think the sports of players today are overpaid, underachieved players, and I don't think that they have anybody at heart but themselves, and I think it's time to... We've got to get back to the one-year contract and everything. Not as much football Players as Players don't even have guaranteed contracts. No, I know. That's the only thing. I think they should get one-year guaranteed contracts. Well, sure. Football. One year. I'm in favor, Nothing, I'm in favor of the nobody, players in this strike. Nobody should no. get more than a one-year guaranteed contract in sports. Nobody. I think the players should get... I'm not going to argue with that. I think the players should get some more money out of the NFL, and I just wish they would get this thing together, and I think it's everybody... I don't know. I think that they'll be back playing within a week or two. The uh, college games this weekend, uh, Michigan going up against Wisconsin, Wolverines to win there, and of course, I will pick against... What's the spread? Michigan. I haven't seen it, but I I'll pick against Michigan State in, Wake any, up and look. in any game. 
and uh, the Spartans going up against Iowa and Iowa City. That spreads nine and a half, I think. Iowa should win, should cover. I don't think that they'll cover. I think Iowa's win. I Iowa's a better team. As I continue but it's, to it's say. it's pretty close, except if it was a Michigan State, I'd pick the As I've said all along, I just do not believe in that Michigan State program. It's not a bad program. They don't believe in you, either. It's a mediocre program, and George Perlis is a mediocre coach. Well, let me just tell you this. Uh, any school that allows Bob Page to attend. And graduate. Very. And graduate. Oh, I don't hand me that. All right. And graduate's right, got fine. to be a bad Now, school. I want to get to Larry Osterman here, but I want you to make a comment because one of your favorite people in sports is in the news. Uh, can we get the camera yeah, on here? Uh, on. Kenny Taylor, do we have I the, want the camera we have over the here. Ron Cameron uh, commentary slide? The Ron Cameron commentary slide. Throw Shut up, up please. Shut up. Well, uh, let me give the news oh, item. Go ahead. You give the news item, Bob. John Ogrodnik traded by the Quebec Nordiques to the New York Rangers. For who, Bob? I, I, two guys I've never heard of before. <laughs> And he and went with somebody I'd never Bob heard of before. Bob Page thought Ogrodnik's value was like Wayne Gretzky. A while. Is that this what I said? Would almost. He's got this guy <laughs> is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I said he's an outstanding John goal Ogrodnik scorer. John Ogrodnik has the heart the size of Bob Page's and the brain the size of Bob Page's. <laughs> That's a problem. Nobody wants him because they say he just doesn't want to play and he's got a horse manure attitude. New York wants him? Oh, yeah, for Jeff Jackson. We, you know, Jeff Jackson did score eight goals his best year in his history. Michelle Bergeron wants him. Michelle Bergeron's not a brain surgeon. Michelle Bergeron's either. good coach. Yeah. He's going to well, kick Ogrodnik in the rear end and get him to play. Yeah, this oh, I wonder well, well, why like you couldn't, if Jock Demers couldn't do it, how can the Michelle Bergeron do it? Really don't know. Yeah. Well, I'll tell what you something. <laughs> but, but, He's Bergeron, a bummer, but, John Ber Ogrodnik. but Bergeron had him in Quebec last year. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? It tells you he liked him at Quebec oh, and he wants like him in New York. Quebec That's what it tells you. Listen, this guy's got all the talent in the world, but he doesn't work. He doesn't care. John O'Grodnick will score 40 goals with the New York Rangers this year. Like Joey Kosher is going to score 25 goals. Like Joey Kosher will score 25 yeah, with that. the Wings. And like Adam Oates will Adam score 30. Adam Oates will score 30, <laughs> even though he's a playmaker. Well, let's get to the guests. Enough of your <laughs> enough of you. The hockey fans have, knowledge the fans, of Bob Page. Really a the, hockey person. The fans have had enough of you already, right? Let's, let's go. Larry Osterman is yes. here of past broadcasting fame. We'll be back to hear why Pass will only be doing five Tiger home games next season. Right after this. <laughs> about to embark on a great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon us. Our mission, crush the enemy before they crush us. Like birth of 13 Mile and have a bite of nostalgia. We're back on Sports View with Larry Osterman of Past Fame. I gotta say right at the outset of the show, I finally get a plug. Joe Falls gives a plug on the Detroit News. Would you tell your partner to get there for dinner on time? He's doing a countdown on the front page of the Detroit News, continued on page 14. Now, if Jim Northrup would have come in to that ballpark at 4, 430, I'd have been on page one of the Detroit News. Tell him that tonight, would you, for me? I'll do that. He'll handle it. But I did it make well. page 14 in a nice... That's better than not making it all, I Yes, suppose. it sure is. And so believe I, me, in Ron's career, Larry, he has never made it at all. <laughs> do you have a question for Larry? I have a question. If you'd be quiet, I'd ask the question. <laughs> You've got to be in your glory right now. Everybody's watching you. Nobody's, nobody's going to the game. They're all sitting home watching fast. I think that's a, I don't think, I think that's a lame duck excuse by a lame duck person about the people are staying away just because of past. What do you think? You'd like to think partially that's a I'd reason? like to think somebody's watching, <laughs> but I'd, I'd be hard pressed to believe that the past yeah. is the whole reason. So would I. Um, I think uh, particularly on nights when it's not good, like last night was cold and rainy. Uh, Baltimore not a very good team, although they haven't proven that since they've come to town. Um, I think we probably are a factor, but I don't think we're that big a factor. Plus, the Tigers have, are going to go over two million this year, which is the fourth largest uh, season's attendance they've had in history. And three out of the last four years, they've gone over two million, so it can't be all bad. What are the other factors then? Well, you've talked about them here. You've the fact read that they about don't them. Treat the help. I mean, the help doesn't treat well, the. Uh, and I'm not going to get into all that stuff, but uh, I think there are a lot of factors, um, and we're just perhaps one of them. The 2% bears are definitely well, a factor. Yeah. Larry, let me ask you this. Do you expect the pass schedule to be cut back for next season? I don't think a decision has been made. No, I don't think it's going to be cut back. Whether the schedule will allow as many home games mm -hmm. as there are this year, I don't. that's to be determined, I'm sure. I'm not sure they even talked about it. But I, we're, we're going to carry 80, 81 ball games again next year. I've always felt that the Tigers ought to televise as hot as they are in this town every road game. Well, that's a great idea. I don't. I think you're right. Unfortunately, there's a cost factor, particularly when you go on the West Coast, and you're also running into a time zone problem there, where all the games come out at 10:30 at night. We'll just have Bob Page loan his alimony payment over to that cost <laughs> factor. Will be taken care of right away. 10:30 at night. I don't think that's a big deal. Why? You think? Well, a lot of people won't stay up. 
uh, till the conclusion of the game. Now mm -hmm. you're selling spots in the eighth, ninth inning, and it's uh, you know one o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure that you're right. giving your sponsors. But don't you make your money primarily on the past subscription? Rate? I think basically. Yeah. yeah. So as long as people are subscribing, basically Pat is going to pass is going to yeah. do well, right? And they got a great deal of pass right now. By the way, if you do want to subscribe, it's five eight three seventy six. Listen to this, this guy give, give these See, gratuitous plugs. Now you can tell your people to pass. I'm giving them good plugs. Unbelievable! Can you be quiet? I know why that money that money is flowing in on a sports fans journal. Now. Yeah, well, it's doing okay. Have them buy some clothes at least for goodness' sake. Well, do I'm very very money. fine. <laughs> Who's sure? What are you talking about there? Uh, all right, I wanted to ask you now about the fact is you you've been around this town forever. It seems like. Boy. Not, no, you didn't work Ooh. with Ty Tyson, though, did you? No, no, he was a little bit before okay, my time. All right, but uh, tell the listeners about how you, you know, your career and how it finally became with George Kell and Tiger Baseball and Channel 2, and then uh, how it passed. Uh, we may not have enough time. <laughs> well, it does go back a long time. Yeah, it does. I came from Nebraska, you know that. You start off before TV came in existence. Bob Page so. was my idol when I came. Oh, I know. <laughs> you're, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're but not I get alone. the gray out of my hair beautifully, don't Lance I? Lance and Joseph yeah, does. I, I want to talk Hair's to you about line. that later, too, and see how you do that. <laughs> yeah, well, Lance and Joseph will answer that question for you. I worked in Kalamazoo a lot of years, 19 years, and uh, you know, I worked with George for uh, 11 with Tiger Baseball. I went to Minnesota, did uh, five years with the Minnesota Twins, and came back when pass went on the air, and that's a quick summary. you got to be a new boy as far as the Minnesota working with them five years. Now, all of a sudden, they're, they're up at the top. Is you it know, you, you left? <laughs> could be. Uh, we went through some lean years up oh, there, as you know, you and um, I'm really happy for them. Uh, you could see that team coming. When we came into Detroit, Bob Kurtz, who is also uh, from Michigan, Michigan, was my partner up there, and uh, we'd come into Detroit when nobody heard of Kent Herbeck or nobody had heard of Tom Bernanski or Gary Gaetti or Frank Viola, and everybody would laugh and they'd say, Jesus, what a terrible team, you know, and, and they weren't very good, but there was a lot of talent there, and we kept saying, wait, just wait. Good young you know. talent. Yep. And uh, now here they are. I don't think they're going to win any uh, pennant yet, but they have won the Western Division, and that's an accomplishment. Unfortunately, a lot of the people who were there that went through those lean years are no longer there. Do you think the Tigers are going to win it? Well, they've got a chance. I mean, anybody went three out of four. It's in their, it's in their hands, though. Right well, of course, yeah. It's not what Milwaukee, it's not what Milwaukee but see, or it's not what that's true. Is, what but it would have helped if we had won on Monday night and, oh. and last night. We're, we're Wednesday night as we take this program Thursday. Where, where did you have them picked at the beginning of the year? I am third. Mm -hmm. I so was you've surprised. been surprised. Yeah. Then, yeah. Well, see, I thought there were a lot of things going on in the offseason. The Jack Morris thing, the Lance Parrish thing. Um, there were a lot of negative things going on in the offseason. And then they had a terrible spring training, and they got off to a bad start the first six weeks. And it took a while for people, and maybe they still haven't, gotten into the swing of things. Obviously, that, they're not into the swing of things. And maybe it's too soon. You know, 84, that was one of those lean, That's you know, a lot of lean things happened between 72 and uh, 84, and everybody was hungry for it. And this year, um, Do you think maybe another thing, know. Larry, is that the promise, 85 thought, well, this team's the best in baseball, they're going to repeat. Then 86, they're going to bounce back and win it. And now 87, the people were tired of these promises. We want to see reality. But it's become a reality this year, and I, I don't think they realize it. I think 85, 86 were factors. Uh, and I think, you know, they got off to that slow start, and they started rolling, and they're playing exceptional baseball. And I think everybody was kind of sitting back and saying, well, you know, this isn't going to last. And it did, whether it'll last another five days now. We'll see. You know, when we come back, we're going to talk about bloopers in sports and uh, mistakes on the air and things like that. We're going to talk to Larry about that. We'll have some fun. But when first, we, we have a commercial message, Let's go don't to we? It. Yes, I want from, to from your newspaper. Yes, yes. Let's give, go every, it's, first. it's restroom time, ladies and gentlemen. No, don't you <laughs> dare let the people. Don't you <laughs> dare. Or you're going to be, be right on your tech and a little. You're going to have to pay me more to do your column if that's <laughs> the case. With more too. from Larry Osterman right after this message from my partner. Let's do it. Close up. Here we go, right here. Close up, even a little closer if you can with the camera. The Sports Fans place. Journal. You see Eli on the front and uh, Denny McLean on the front. They're writing exclusive stories, Denny, about what happened in jail and what he misses most and coming home. It's an excellent column. And Eli, what happened in New York? And is he coming back or is his agent, uh, what's happening there? There's some real questions there. Do the TV stations want him? Eli told me yes. Some other people are saying no. And then when he gave you the information, did you say, Thanks, Eli. I did. I <laughs> sure did. Okay, now, Sports Fans Journal is going strong. Danny and Eli are two of my many fine writers for the newspaper. Uh, Mike Downey writes in a very funny column this issue. We've got people like uh, Larry King, the syndicated radio and TV talk shows. Here's how you can subscribe. By sending that $15 check or money order made payable to the paper Sports Fans Journal and send to Sports Fans Journal, P.O. Box 12170, Birmingham, Michigan, 48012. 
You know, you can call this number 24 hours a day for more information, by the way, 350-3530, or stop by your local newsstand, bookstore, Tiger Stadium, souvenir stands. Now, here are my writers. Uh, Don Cherry, Joe Bowen, the uh, hockey writer for the hockey announcer, the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, is aboard with me. Now, as I mentioned, Larry King and Denny and Eli, but we also have people like Don Cherry, Dick Vitale, George Allen, Bob Feller, Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Pass His Own Jim Northrup, Jim Harbaugh's writing, Bill Gadsby, and a whole bunch more. Lem Barney, Dexter Bussey. I think this is a must for all sports fans. If you're looking for stats and box scores, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for good, hard hitting sports by people that know what they're talking about, the real personalities here, not just writers, sports fans, journalists for you. Don't forget, call this number 24 hours a day, 350. Three five. I see. Three you, you got me listed on the cover this month. Too, well, right what happened there. was I your check. I'm gonna get some extra cleared. money from you. No, for your this check pal, cleared. Oh, That's see. why you're listed on the cover. There <laughs> We're is. back on Sports View today, and our guest is longtime Michigan sportscaster Larry Osterman, now doing the Tiger Games with Pass. I say Michigan because, as you alluded to earlier, you made your career primarily yeah. at WKZO in Kalamazoo, which was owned by John Fetzer. Right. You worked for Fetzer many years, and a lot of people have said Larry Osterman is related to Fetzer. He's his <laughs> son-in-law. I you wish. Want, none of that's true. None of that's true. What kind of guy was he to work for? I hear he was the cheapest guy next to Harold Gross that I work for at Channel 6 in Lansing, the cheapest guy in broadcasting. Well, he owned the station. I didn't, I didn't really feel, feel like I worked for him because mm -hmm. there were people that I worked for that worked for him. Uh, he always treated me fine. He knew my name, <laughs> which I thought was important. I thought that, um, I thought it was very fair. I, I think that probably the salary structure could have been a little bit higher, but every place you go, <laughs> I think you feel like you, uh, that was very well make. there, I'd heard, but from other people that worked for him in the, in the business that his salary structure was yeah. high. But then things started to grow for you. Well, when I came to Detroit, I think it turned everything, uh, getting some exposure in the major market. As mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, that's the big He's key. He's been in the minor leagues all his life. He's still in the minor leagues. That's no. a Working with thing. Cameron, how can he be anything else but in the minor <laughs> leagues, Larry? You know that. But um, I came over to work for WWJ for one year mm -hmm. yeah, before I went to Minnesota Twins. And that was really a big You did the Tiger Games on Channel 4. Channel 2 and 4, mm -hmm. from 1967 until yeah. they switched over to Channel 4. What's the big difference between doing that and working for PASS? Broadcasting, mechanics, thing? I see you guys have more time between uh, innings now to fill in. I see you frequently doing interviews between innings, don't you? Well, uh, we were until the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're sold out. has been sold. Yes. yes. Yeah. So Sports no fans journal included. There, there really isn't any different. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. What's your, uh, you know, we, we mentioned going out as a teaser that we'll talk about embarrassing moments. We got a kick out of, uh, we talked about this last night, of Al Kaline and uh, George Kell. A couple of things uh, Al Kaline did recently the, in the part of the dull action with the Tigers. Uh, nothing was happening. They were getting beaten by a huge amount of runs. And Kaline the, all of a sudden blurted out, George. Is Mark McGuire a rookie? Well, if you want to talk about bloopers between Kaline okay. and Kell, we'll take the next 25 okay. minutes. Well, between well, well, but we'll also said the one that really came to mind that caused a lot of controversy was the fact is they're telling Clint Courtney stories oh, on geez. the air. We can go on. Well, just a minute. This leads into something. We're telling Clint Courtney stories on the air, and uh, they said, Kaline said, well, George, I hear he's do, really doing good managing in the minor leagues, right? George Kell said, well, he was, but he's dead now. And you had a, a similar incident uh, just recently on the air, didn't you? Yeah, it was uh, just before the... <laughs> 72 Tigers and Oakland Athletics played their old-timers game, and I made some crack to Northrop about possibility of bringing John Rice back. He was the guy that blew the play yeah. at first base. First base the umpire, yeah. And uh, he said, well, it's going to be tough to go get him because he's six feet under. He's dead, you know. <laughs> and I was embarrassed because I didn't know. I hadn't heard <laughs> And that. then all of a sudden he came and comes, the next, comes in. <laughs> the next day, we get this call from Bill Cutler who's watching the game in Arizona. He used to be in the front office with the American League, and he said, John Rice is not dead. He's alive and living and, and having a good well time in Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> so <laughs> that, so you, uh, were, you were exonerated. Right, yeah. Speaking of Arizona, places like that, Pass is picked up by a satellite all over the country. Yeah. You must get interesting mail from different parts we of the country. We do. We <laughs> do. <laughs> we, uh, uh, we ran into a lady in Minneapolis who watches regularly, and mm -hmm. she wanted to get in on our Hit One Home prize pack uh, and uh, win that if she could possibly do it. But they have satellites, and, and they never ever been to Detroit, but they're a Tiger fan. The fact is, you know, you know, we talked about like embarrassing moments. And then what was your, say, your most embarrassing moment in television? We're going to mm. hearing on this show with Ron Cameron, right? <laughs> now. Outside of this, outside of this. Oh, uh, I've had a, you know, you're going to have a bunch of them if you're on the air live at all. It's yeah. gonna, you're going to get drilled, but. Uh, uh, well, where would be the, uh, that's a tough question. There have been a bunch of them. I had <laughs> some, I can't repeat some of them that have no. happened that words <laughs> slip out that, uh, you know, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> those are the toughest kind because you always have somebody sitting next to you that has a cough button. Well, Denny, I'll tell you, remember Denny Franklin when he was working sure. with Oh, Boyle yes, myself? we remember that, yes. Michigan's playing, I can't say that one either. I can give you he a little bit. He is blank. 
Okay. Bo is, you know what, yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Michigan's playing Northwestern in football, and Michigan should be just pounding them, and Northwestern keeps scoring. <laughs> and I made the comment to Denny Franklin, who was working as a car man, that Bo's going to be a little upset with this, and upset. he's going to be more. Be, well, we can say that on the air, can't we? No, just? no. Well, we just did. We just did. Well, no, anyway, so. Well, uh, this we'll, is <laughs> <laughs> But we'll, it was a little embarrassing. That was, yeah. And we'll close it out with Larry Osterman. And uh, you're going to stay, too, for the... I'm going to stay for the... Over. Sure, I'm going to stay. Right after this. What kind of question is that? The 1987 Major League Baseball season is in full swing. And now, you can track every team all summer long by tuning to the Pennant Chase on Pats. Join host Larry Osterman each week as he takes a look at the Majors Divisional Races, the American League and National League Players of the Week, as well as exclusive up-close interviews with the game's biggest stars. To stay up to date with all the happenings in and around the world of baseball, join us every week for the Pennant Chase on Michigan's cable home of the Tigers, Pats. That was me, John Rouser, not too many years ago as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. And don't forget football fans, all the big games, Sundays and Mondays, are on our wide screen TV. The Detroit Repertory contribution to theater in metropolitan Detroit has never been greater. The Repertory has been making theater goers happy for years. The performances are great. I began my acting career through free acting workshops at the Detroit Rep. My organization is giving a fundraiser here tonight. The Detroit Repertory, professional theater in the community worth discovering. Well, I'm sorry, but Cameron flapped his mouth so much, we're totally out of time on the program. All We've we can do is thank time. our sponsors, TCOM Pagers, uh, Larry Payne and the folks at Dugan's Irish Pub, Sports Fans Journal, Pass, Mike Perry, the gang at P&P Cycle, and, of course, Uncle Al, Al Dietrich Olson Vila sends along this T-shirt. You come last Compton week, you got a Bob Page jock strap. Thank you for putting up with Ron. I appreciate it, and thank you for joining us. And this You're is the week too late. Sports Peter Day. <laughs> the monitor.